This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hello, my name is Chanel. Welcome to my bookbinding studio. I'm going to show you some easy bookbinding projects that you can make as gifts to your loved ones or even for yourself. These books make for some really cozy winter crafting projects as well. If you are going to make these books as gifts, I encourage you to try more than once because there can be a lot of trial and error involved in bookbinding. Let's get started. To make these ribbon notebooks, you will need paper for your cover and pages, a metal ruler and utility knife, something to punch holes with. I'm using this hollow hole punch and a mallet, some ribbon, a needle big enough to thread your ribbon, and a corner rounder, which is optional. I'll also be using some basic bookbinding tools. If you want to learn more about tools and materials for bookbinding, check out this video. Fold the papers lengthwise following the grain and then cut the papers in half with your metal ruler and knife. Mark three holes on the fold, three quarter inch or two centimeters from each side and one in the middle. Punch the holes. It took me a while to get through all the sheets. The holes need to be big enough for your needle and ribbon to fit through. You could use an awl for a thinner ribbon. Measure a ribbon length of about three and a half times the length of the book. Thread your needle with the ribbon. For the pamphlet stitch, start in the middle hole from the outside. Sew through one of the remaining holes, then through the last one, and go back out to where you started. Tie a bow, and that's the book. To finish off, trim the foredge and round the corners. Decorate the cover however you'd like. I found these lovely frame stamps from Michaels. In place of ribbon, you can use yarn or twine, and for the cover, you can collage layers of stickers, stamps, paper textures, and even cutouts in the cover. These are great as stocking stuffers or gifted as a little collection of notebooks. To make these sketchbooks, you will need sketch paper, cardstock, some decorative paper or thick wrapping paper. I got mine from this booklet that was gifted to me. An awl, scissors and utility knife, metal ruler, thread and needle, a large clip, and a glue stick. To make the covers, start by cutting the cardstock into an 8.5 by 8.5 square. The way that the paper bends more easily is the direction of the paper grain. It's ideal to open the book with the grain. I'm marking it with an arrow pointing to the top of the book. Let's wrap the cover. With the decorative paper folded in half, cut one side so that there's about a half inch or one centimeter border around the cardstock. On the other side, measure and cut the length of eight and a quarter inches. Fold the trim over the cardstock and cut the corners like this. Cut the width of the large flap so that it's slightly narrower than the cardstock. Glue down the tabs and the large flap. I'm using little glue to minimize moisture and to prevent rippling.
lightly press with some cardboard and a weight. Repeat this process for the second cover. Cut the sketch paper to an 8.5 by 8.5 square. I decided on fewer sheets because it can be hard to punch holes through a thick stack of paper. If you've tried stab binding, you know what I mean. Check for paper grain by seeing which way it bends more easily, and then put the covers and pages together. Clip the book on the outer edge. Draw a pencil line 3 quarters inch or 2 centimeters from the spine edge. Punch four evenly spaced holes into the line. The spacing between the holes should be 1 and 5 eighths inches or about 4 centimeters. For the extra corner holes, measure the halfway point between the first and last holes and the book corners. Twist the awl into each hole, being careful not to poke yourself. You can now erase the pencil line. Measure and cut thread that is five times the length of the book. I'm going to refer to the holes as sewing stations from 1 to 6. Start in station 4 from the bottom. Leave a 2 to 3 inch tail. Wrap around the spine and sew through station 4. Sew through station 3. Wrap around the spine and go through station 3. Then sew through station 2 from the bottom. Wrap around the spine and through station 2. Wrap around the bottom edge and sew through station 2. Now sew into the corner hole and wrap around the spine edge and bottom edge. Go through station 2 from the bottom. Then station 3 from the top. Through station 4 from the bottom. And through station 5 from the top. Wrap around the spine and top edges. Sew through the corner hole and wrap around the spine and top edge as well. Go through station 5 to meet the beginning end of the thread.
to finish off, tie a knot and cut off the excess. Stab binding is a great way to use loose leaf papers that are lighter weight. The result is simple and beautiful. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on a whole bunch of creative topics. I've taken a lot that have been helpful for me in my small business journey and I've taken a lot of other classes that have taught me new creative skills like drawing, journaling, and crafts that help me let loose, especially when I'm feeling stuck. This class, Painting with Thread by Danielle Clough, is blowing my mind and making me really excited about learning embroidery. We'll see if I have the patience for it, but maybe I'll incorporate more embroidery in my book designs. Since winter is here, I'm looking forward to being a homebody and just staying cozy with some Skillshare classes. I think a Skillshare membership would make a really great gift as well. I know I would love to receive that. The first 1,000 people to click my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. To make this journal, you will need writing or sketch paper, two sheets of felt, embroidery floss and needle, painter's tape or a light colored washi tape, bookbinding thread and needle, ribbon, an awl, bone folder, scissors and utility knife, and a metal ruler. I'm cutting the paper in half to make 48 sheets that measure 8.5 by 11. Each signature will have eight sheets. Fold six signatures. I'm checking to see if the signatures and the felt cover is a good fit. The paper edges are sticking out a bit, but we'll cut them at the end. Decide which pieces of felt will be the inner and outer cover. Trim the inner piece by a couple millimeters. Measure embroidery floss about three times the length of the cover. You will need to add more thread later. Sew the blanket stitch all around the edges of the cover. I hope my sewing is clear enough for you to follow. If it's unclear, there's plenty of blanket stitch tutorials online. Feel free to make adjustments as you go. I want the felt sheets to fold neatly together after it's sewn, so I'm keeping it folded as I work.
I should have done this sooner, but I decided to embroider the cover before I finished the blanket stitch. I'm using the chain stitch to embroider this heart. Patches would be a great way to decorate the cover as well. Holding the signatures together somewhat loosely, the spine measures one inch, which is perfect because I'm going to use this one inch painter's tape as a guide for the spine. Tape along the middle of the outside cover. Using our ruler and a pen that doesn't smudge, we're going to draw our guide for sewing. On the top and bottom of the tape, mark six evenly spaced points for each signature. My first point is two millimeters from the tape edge and then every four millimeters after that. Sorry for switching between imperial and metric. I often use whichever is convenient for me. Connect the six points along the length of the spine. Now I'm going to mark nine evenly spaced points along the spine. The outer holes are a half inch from the top and bottom edge. And then all the holes are spaced one inch or two and a half centimeters apart. Connect the dots across the spine to create a grid. All the intersections of the grid mark the sewing stations. I'm going to make a punching guide. Cut a scrap piece of paper to the same length of the signatures. Using the spine grid we just made, mark 9 points on the paper. Use the punching guide to make holes into the signatures with your awl. Use small pieces of tape on the top and bottom of the inner cover. Match it with the outside tape. Mark the same six points on the top and bottom. Measure and cut book binding thread that is eight times the length of the spine. Tie a knot on one end and thread the other end. Start sewing into the rightmost hole of the first signature from the inside. Pull the thread all the way to the knot. Line up the signature with the points on the tapes. Sew directly through the cover, coming out of the first intersection on the outside spine. Sew into the next point, making sure it lines up with the whole of the signature. Sew into the signature and out the next hole. Continue to sew like this for the rest of the signature.
To add a new signature, your needle should be on the inside cover. Sew into the adjacent hole of the new signature to the inside. Sew out through the next hole and through the cover to the outside. Sew through the point towards the bottom of the book. and back into the first hole of the signature. On the inside of the signature, sew through the third hole to the outside. That's all you need to know for sewing on the rest of the signatures. When I was designing this book, it was very clear in my head, but as I tried it out, I realized that it can be very tricky. So have patience, my friend. Something that could help is using a fabric pen to draw lines on the inside spine of where the signatures will go. To finish the book, sew back into the signature and tie a double knot like this. The sewing is done. Carefully peel off the painter's tape from the spine. Let's trim the foredge. I'm going to cut three signatures at a time. Close the cover to decide where the cut should be made. I like an overhang of at least 1 8 inch or 3 millimeters. And make sure the top and bottom edges of the signatures are flush. 
Hold the ruler firmly with your non-dominant hand. Using a fresh blade, cut along the ruler with medium pressure. For the second half of the book, use the third signature as a guide. Make any adjustments and trim outlying edges. Cut two pieces of ribbon about 12 inches or 30 centimeters. I'm sealing the tips with a lighter. Sew one inch of the ribbons on the inside covers, making sure they line up. Tie a bow and trim off the excess. And we're done! An alternative way of clasping the journal is to sew on a strip of felt or fabric on the back cover and attaching it to the front cover with a button or velcro. There are many variations of long stitch that you can try if you want to change up the sewing. I love felt as a soft cover material because it feels so nice in the hands. I think this journal would make for a wonderful keeper of thoughts and secrets. That is it for my tutorial. This is my gift to you. Tag me or DM me if you try out these projects. I'd love to see them. Have a wonderful holidays ahead and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!